Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and appreciate you holding this hearing. Welcome our guests and look forward to your testimony. America's at an important inflection point. The COVID-19 pandemic hit our shores just over a year ago. Too many families mourn the loss of loved ones. Too many children have lost a year of school. Many felt depression, and millions lost an irreplaceable year of their childhood. Too many family-owned businesses are permanently shuttered. Far too many low-income Americans have been thrown out of work because of selective, ineffective lockdowns. And now, we're finally starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel, as the title of this hearing suggests. American ingenuity has led the way. Operation Warp Speed, which President Trump put in place, delivered the fastest vaccine in history. Investments by this U.S. Congress over the past 25 to 30 years in biomedical research have provided the platform to deliver these vaccines. The American pharmaceutical industry, who are world innovators, as well, Dr. Fauci, as your team at the National Institute of Health, deserve tremendous credit for the work that's been done to deliver those vaccines. And the American people are starting to benefit. Uh, through President Trump's leadership and his refusal to be told no, that led to extraordinary speed, warp speed to use his term, in getting the vaccines from the lab into the arms of over 100 million Americans. 112 million people to be specific, more than 33 percent of the U.S. population have received at least one dose of vaccine. About 70 million people 20% of the U.S. population have been fully vaccinated. I commend President Biden for accepting the challenge that House Republicans issued at the beginning of this year to not just accept what was already in place, the 100 million vaccine goal, but to in fact double that to 200 million shots. We're now on pace to reach that goal that we set. But Dr. Fauci and Dr. Walensky, the question that I get asked the most these days is pretty simple. If I got the vaccine, why can't I resume my normal activities? Why can't my kids go back to school? Why can't I go to a restaurant with my friends again? Neither the CDC, nor NIH, nor the White House have provided a satisfactory or consistent answer to that question. In the absence of logical guidance, Americans have done what Americans do better than anybody in the world. They've taken the initiative to safely get back to their everyday activities and lives as best as they can. I know we've learned a lot along the way and are still learning about this virus, but the data now shows that the harshest lockdowns did not work. School closings did not work. In fact, they've done devastating damage to these young kids and still in many states are destroying future opportunities for millions of young children across America when all the science says schools not only can be reopened safely, but should be reopened safely. Despite the evidence, some local communities, especially in northeastern states, have chosen to remain locked down. Some communities, more so in the south, have chosen to lift mandates and safely reopen schools as well as local businesses. Yet as of today, the 10 states with the highest infection rates are all northern states, Michigan, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, et cetera. Florida gets a lot of media attention, much of it unfairly harsh, because the people of that state made an early decision to follow the science, to get kids back in school, and to make life as normal as possible while confronting this challenge of the virus. Their results certainly appear better than those of lockdown zealots in New York or California. But just last week, YouTube took down a video of a roundtable that Governor DeSantis of Florida led talking with doctors about kids and schools and masks. YouTube has cited CDC guidance as the reason they took down that video. Why would anyone want to silence a governor of a state on the front line of this pandemic, holding a round table with doctors about best practices regarding their own experiences in the real world and sharing what they've learned. 
The American people also deserve better answers about the federal government's response to the unprecedented surge of illegal migrants crossing our southern border. Last week, I led 10 of my colleagues to the U.S.-Mexico border to see firsthand the devastating national security, humanitarian, and health crisis that President Biden has created at our southern border with his disastrous open border policies. All Republicans on this subcommittee have made that trip to the border to see what's going on. At the Donna Processing Facility, we encountered thousands of migrants cramped into makeshift shelters in overcrowded rooms that were more than 10 times the capacity limits that have been set. We saw children in tears who simply wanted to go back home to be with their families, but instead they were here in these federally run holding cells with at least a 10% COVID positive rate, many being held for longer than three weeks, well over the legal limit. President Biden also is not fully enforcing Title 42 of the Public Health Safety Act, designed to prevent migrants from spreading COVID in the United States. Since President Biden took office, families with children under seven are being dropped off at the McAllen bus station in Texas and released from custody. No COVID tests, no quarantines, no enforcement that all Americans have to follow. Even more concerning is that the Biden administration may completely end enforcement of Title 42. If that happens, Border Patrol agents have told us that the number of illegal crossings at the border could mushroom even higher. As we toured the Donna Processing Facility, we saw the holding rooms that President Biden set up for young children. Each room is not supposed to have more than 50 people, six per cell. But what we saw was more than 400 children packed like sardines into these cells that were designed for less than 50. It was heartbreaking to see so many young children packed into these cells, laying on floors, many crying because they want to return home. Social distancing does not exist in these facilities. Dr. Fauci and Dr. Walensky, I would urge you to go down to the border to see what's going on at that federally run detention facility in violation of the very CDC guidance that you issued that we as Americans have to follow. But I also urge you as public health officials to understand the frustration and confusion of the American people. COVID positive migrants are released into the country and that's allowed, but a vaccinated person can't go to a restaurant. Kids packed into a crowded, poorly ventilated cell six inches apart, not six feet apart, for 20 hours a day is being allowed, but we can't reopen schools in America for in-person learning. That is lunacy. There is absolutely no reason why this is going on. President Biden and Vice President Harris need to go down to the border and see what their policies have created and reverse what's happening. The public health messaging only works if the people trust the messengers. The light at the end of this tunnel, which every one of us on this subcommittee agrees on this point, as do our witnesses, that light at the end of the tunnel is to vaccinate as many people as possible and to reopen America. The Biden administration needs to do a better job starting today. Mr. Chairman, I yield back the balance of my time.